your epigenetic age is like 13 years younger than your biological age. Is, is that correct? Yeah, mm-hmm. as measured by the true diagnostic extrinsic clock. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's true. And, and that's, that's from your program, would you say? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I would. I, you know, I published on, if you go to my drcarefitzgerald.com website and pull up a D, there are DNA methylation blog, I used Zymo previously and, you know, Zymo based their clock more closely on the Horvath, the original Horvath 2013 clock. I know it's Zymo's clock is proprietary at this point, but it's got some of those original 353 CPGs. And I think well, actually many more at this point, but um, on that one, I, I want to say my bio age was like, uh, was about four years younger. I think that that clock is in closer step with chronological age, but still, you know, it's great. I'll take it. So it was more, in, and, and I, that was, I did those uh, prior to, you know, a while prior to doing, you know, my most recent follow-up at True Diagnostic. So there's variation among the clocks. You know, some clocks are trained to be in, lo- you know, more in lockstep with chronological age, such as Zymos, and then some like the extrinsic age of at true diagnostic is is you know looking more at, at health parameters at at, at uh, phenotype. That's an N of one. So how long have you I been on? Yeah, the, how long have you been on this diet? I, I mean, basically the the protocol diet that you're following? Probably, I, well, I'm not perfect. <laughs> I'm not perfect. But I started to do it in earnest, like paying attention to my numbers around 2017. Um, around when we started to create the study and we started recruiting and writing it up, I, I jumped on it maybe early 2018. And I've been... Um, and I followed it really pretty strictly since then. I, it's funny. My only hesitation is that I was recently sick. I didn't have COVID, but my daughter, you know, after she's a toddler and after um, basically having her immune system shut down, you know how toddlers get, they're sick, like their first two years in school, but she finally, you know, post she's gotten sufficient exposure to kids germs to come home with a couple of really doozy sicknesses. And I ended up catching one of them and didn't do anything and didn't eat. And when I finally started eating, it wasn't the best because I just had been sick, but yeah, I'm back on it now. And in the book, we actually outline what I do, like how I interpret the diet. Um, and it's basically the way that I do it, the, what works for me as a busy single mom is, you know, taking a large Pyrex glass bowl and packing in for my day at work, most of my, my veggie requirements. So it's about seven plus cups of veggies, plus my seeds, you know, so pumpkin seeds go on most of my meals. Um, and maybe I'll throw in some additional nuts. Um, I love pecans. Uh, and I'll do some good fat in there. I might throw in avocado and then I'll have some kind of a protein like, you know, salmon or, you know, I'll throw in some chicken or sometimes I'll have a burger. Um, but I bang out, I will pack my nutrient needs into a, basically into a Pyrex and that I will eat that over the course of my work day. And then I'll come home and have a smaller meal that, you know, just fits in what I, what I missed out. And at the beginning of the week, I will hard boil, you know, five eggs. And I'll just take those through. So, so a meal, I might have a couple of eggs plus my giant salad and I'll just, and that's how I make sure I get my numbers. I'm not a huge fan of liver, unfortunately, or at least cooking liver. I like pate. I love pate. Um, people who are actually one of our study participants said he was making like a chicken fried liver and it was better than chicken nuggets. I don't know how he did it. He didn't do a grain based he probably did like almond flour or anything, but he said it was delicious and it sounds good to me, but I do, I do New Zealand um, non-defatted desiccated liver caps. That's how I get my liver. I think it's really important. Actually, I have them right here. <laughs> I think it, I think that, I think liver is extremely important. I think it's a quite a superfood. So for those of us who eat animal protein, uh, you want to get, you want to get those in. Are you still taking 
the epigenetic tests. So after, so, so 18, so that's what, three years or so. So are you still seeing any trend in, in your epigenetic age? It's continually gone. It's gone down. I mean, I think obviously I'm going to, it's going to stop. I don't anticipate going into my thirties or my twenties. Yeah. Um, I would love to maintain it. Uh, but it, you know, the reality is it's continued to go, go down. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'll hit a plateau. Maybe we'll see it, it turn up, but, um, for the time being, that's been the trajectory. And, but I do want to point out, I mean, I know you've got a really savvy listening audience. Um, we're talking about different clocks, you know, so really I would say Zymo is closely associated with the first generation or clock. And that's the clock we used in our study. And I don't know that we're going to see crazy drops in age, you know, like we do in the true diagnostic extrinsic age, you know, and, or the, or the pheno age or some of the, the later generation clocks. Right. Yeah, I just wondered, I mean, if you've taken two or three of the tests with the later generation clocks, whether you're continuing to see... Uh, no, no, no. I just did. That was my first. The, that was my first. done one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So stay right. tuned. Stay, that would be interesting to see. Uh, and also, I mean, whether any of the people from the first study came back into the second study and, and whether they've seen continued improvement. Right, right. Yeah, that would be... Awesome. I wish that we had built long-term follow-up into our study design, but you know, we were just just the heavy lift to manifest a clinical trial. It was hard to. I didn't. I didn't realize at the time that we would want to pay attention. The and and we can't just reach out to them. It would require an amendment to IRB, which which is a possibility. We could do it. Um, We've had contact with a handful of folks and um, some of them are just moving right along with it. Like they've really internalized these principles and, you know, they're part of the fabric of how they live. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's really interesting. And, and once you've done it and it, it's kind of, you've seen that it's been positive, then you could see mm -hmm. that you would stick with it. Yeah. Okay. So excellent. Thank you very much. And so cool. So the, the book, just to repeat, uh, is uh, is available on Amazon. It's uh, Younger You, Reduce Your Bioage and Live Longer, Better. And uh, pre-order now and available on the 18th. That's right. Yep. And, uh, and we'll, we'll link to the website that you can go to the 3YY website. So if anyone yep. wants to go and kind of sign up for the, for the app and the follow-up, then they can go and do it there. Thanks for okay. having me again, Richard. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. And again, congratulations on getting the book published. Thank you. Thank you.